Hello, this is a shout out uh, to Thor Carlton. Uh, okay, this is how it was when I got involved with Marilyn Manson. I was living over in Echo Park, right off of Echo Park Boulevard. And, well, out of the blue, and I mean way out of the blue, I mean, I had been out of the, out of the loop for a while. All of a sudden, I get a phone call. And the person on the line goes, um, yeah, we want you to be in a video with Marilyn Manson. Well, <clears throat> tell you the truth, this is how out of the loop I was. I didn't know who Marilyn Manson was. Okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, my my heyday was back when Donny Osmond and the rest of them were stomping their their feet and saying "puppy love." Okay, um, so I tell the caller, um, "Okay, Marilyn Manson, who is she?" And they go, "It's not a she; it's a he." Oh, okay. Um, Okay, what's it involved? And I and they told me, and I said, okay, sure. They asked me what my pay scale was, and I gave them my pay scale, and it said not a problem. So I, uh, well, I showed up um, in back of the Superior Court building in downtown Los Angeles. And they had this great big old stage that was like six feet off the ground. Now, I'm in a wheelchair, mind you. There's no ramp access. Here, I'm supposed to be in the damn thing. Um, <clears throat> so, Marilyn, AKA Brian Warner, sees that I'm having a difficult time. So they said, I'll tell you what, we still want you to be in this. So they go, this is what we're doing. We're redoing the music video. And um, since you can't be in this part, definitely, um, we will pay for today, but then they want you to come out another day, and so they picked me up, and they took me all the way out to Simi Valley. Well, there's this um, museum out there, of course, that was closed down. Um, the building was a round donut shaped building, and so, of course, I show up looking all glamorous, thinking that's what they wanted. Well, that isn't what they wanted. Um, I had my hair all up, and they, of course, took all my hair down, straightened it, shaved off my eyebrows, and painted eyeshadow straight across the spot on my face and put me in a nude colored dress. I guess so I was supposed to look like I was naked. Well, didn't have anything on underneath the dress, so uh, as I stay in the industry, I was um, basically um, I was free balling it. Okay, 
So um, I started doing what they wanted me to do, and they asked me to what dances that I can do. And I said, well, back in the 70s, I used to do the robot. So I did the robot. And that's what they used in the video. Um, now, I thought that was the end of it. Well, I get a phone call from Brian. And he goes, Sammy, I want you at the 1998 MTV Awards. Well, I said, okay. He says, do uh, you have anything in gold? I said, yes, I do. He goes, good, because it's pink and gold is the color theme. And I said, okay. So I had a gold secret gown that I had made for San Francisco. I just got done doing a San Francisco gig. And so needless to say, um, showed up at the Universal Backlot and needless to say, they put me in the van and they took me back to the dressing room. Well, my assistant at the time, her name was Lori, um, sat there and she was with me, go into the dressing room. Now, mind you, I had no clue that I was going to have to do this, but the gold mylar was still on the bolt. That's the role um, for the women's uh, dresses. And all that was there were the pink shirts and pink pants for the police officers. Okay, there were no, nothing else was ready. The costumer didn't show up. And I looked at Lori, and Lori looked at me, and I called Brian's cell phone. And I said, uh, you've got a situation here. And he goes, what's that? I said, um, your backup singers are here. None of the costumes are done. And he said, uh... <laughs> Is there anything you can do? I said, sure, I'll do it. Not a problem. So I called up the in-house prop department. And I said, I need a case of pink spray paint. And I said, Barbie pink. They're like, okay. And I said, I need six cans of gold metallic spray paint. I said, okay. So I had the girls lay down on the dress room ground. My assistant sat there and drew around them on paper. We sat there and we cut out on the mylar the forms of the dresses. And with a hot glue gun, we put them into the gowns. There was no zipper involved, no hems, no nothing. It was like the very last minute quick glue you into this dress, give up. So we took the boots and the shoes. Now you know those those concrete 
barrier. Well, the, the, they're like steel poles that are in the parking lot. Well, he put the shoes upside down on the parking lot pillars. And we <laughs> literally took uh, spray can triggers, put them on the, on the spray cans, and we took all the laces out of the shoes. And we did all 62 pairs of boots and sprayed them pink. All the helmets we sprayed pink. Okay, and all the accessories were made pink for the cops. And it came to the girls. We took their thigh high boots, put them on the pillars, and sprayed them gold. Now, I had a makeup trunk that was on wheels. And so. <laughs> we basically did the girls' hair and makeup, got them ready. With all this was in four hours. I called up Brian. I says, "You owe me, dude, big time." So time comes, and we all take the bus or the van up to the stage to the uh, auditorium where they were doing the MPV on the back lot. And so get on the stage. Now they had a, a body mic and ear piece in my ear. And Dick Clark was the executive producer. And I guess Dick had seen me or something. And I heard him plainly say, do not film the drag queen. Well, I knew exactly who he was talking about. And I said, I went backstage because they were setting up to do the rehearsal. And I sat there and I got on the mic because I had the headgear on. And I said, Dick Clark, this is Sandy Crisp. I said, uh, I heard your statement. I said, listen, you overqualified DJ. Um, I was hired for this. I said, you might be famous, but so am I. I says, this is discrimination. And I says, if I'm not recorded, then I will see your company. And he plainly just sat there and kept saying, we're not going to put you on the air. And I go, well, whatever. So I got out there and I told Brian what was said. And needless to say, Brian and Twiggy both agreed that they were going to get as close as they could to me so that I would end up on the broadcast. Because if you notice on the video itself, they tried everything they could to block me out camera-wise. So that is how I ended up on the Marilyn Manson Dope Show video. Um, I really do appreciate all the fans I have. And I want you to know that, you know, your comments are red and I do appreciate them. Um, 
right now I'm getting things together. I will be sewing today because I've got a great big thing that's happening on October 27th at the Palace Theater in downtown Los Angeles with Vita Don Va, Va, wait, Data Von Keese. Um, she is a burlesque dancer. And so I'm doing my thing down on stage with her. Apparently I'm her opening act. Okay, so um, it is now 6.24 a.m. on Sunday, the 22nd of September. So I hope you all enjoy your day and God bless you all and Thank you for being fans. It really makes me feel loved and appreciated. Okay? Talk to you later. Bye-bye.